So thanks everybody for joining. So today's uh, UX talk, we have Anita Parambha uh, as our speaker. Uh, she is a professor and uh, research at Institute of the Design and Communication at uh, Austria. So I, I welcome Anita and thanks for uh, for time uh, you are given today for today's talk. Uh, so let's uh, start on today's topic. But uh, before you start, uh, I will just give some introduction about uh, about you and uh, more about what UX talk is all about. Uh, so today, uh, Anita is going to talk on interaction design and practice. Uh, that is today's uh, is a researcher and lecturer at interaction design and task oriented design at. Uh, Institute of Design and Communication at, in Austria. So for several years, she has been part of the working team as actually runs in Graz, an association from institutions of complementary art. She is also a member of Art Collective Monto and host at the artist run workshop at their Shedaras. I uh, hope I pronounced correctly. Uh, okay, now she is also uh, International trainer for UX QCC, uh, that is certified program uh, uh, for U UX professionals. So, welcome Anika for today's uh, UX talk and thanks for giving us time for UX community here in India. Uh, so, before we start our uh, actual interview, uh, let me take a few mo moments to talk about UX talk. So basically UX talk, we started uh, during COVID time. Uh, so to, to spread awareness about user experience, user study, uh, visibility, user psychology. So that was the idea behind about this UX talk. So I'm happy uh, there are good uh, international speakers, Indian speakers are also part of a UX talk. Uh, we also done uh, one conference dedicated to women uh, in last uh, couple of weeks back. So we have a good speakers there also. And in future, we are going to come up with uh, different topics. So idea again is to spread about uh, UX, the correct meaning of UX, that is idea. Uh, parallelly, we are also starting a few activities on the UX talk, that is workshop conferences. Uh, and uh, in this, in this uh, uh, series we are our first workshop with uh, Susan Winshek in 26 October so that is uh, we are looking the user psychology and behavioral uh, studies will be helped out for professionals uh, soon uh, in November we are also going to start our office uh, once again back in activity because long during COVID we have almost work from home online and so during uh, in November we are definitely uh, going to start our uh, class uh, office and classroom activities. Uh, thanks once again uh, for everybody to come in uh, on this UX talk and and let's start with today's uh, talk with Anika. Uh, so thanks. Uh, good afternoon, Anika. So I think it's afternoon at UK. Okay. Yeah. Hello. So, hello. So today, uh, as our topic is, you know, as an interaction design. So before we come to our core topic, so if you give us uh, your introduction about you know, how, how is your journey and how you started, so that will be an you know, inspiration for our audience. Also. So can you? Okay. Yeah. Then thank you, Tusha, and welcome to everyone. Uh, I hope you hear me well, but I think it should work. So yeah, well, welcome. Uh, I'm here in Austria, Graz. It's a rainy afternoon, but I'm very happy uh, to be with you today. It is afternoon. So to my journey, so uh, 20 years ago, I studied information design with the spe specialization of interaction and media design uh, here in Graz. And from that, the journey went on. So I was um, self-employed for a long time. So I did from the beginning, I did projects on my own. I worked uh, for clients, especially in um, arts, culture, uh, nonprofit organizations, museums, and so on. 
but very soon I also started to work in research. So uh, for the university I work now, I also started to work in research projects. So that means uh, European funded, uh, huge uh, multidisciplinary teams that work on different topics. So it's quite common here in Europe to, ha to have such projects. And they, they all were uh, in the field of uh, architecture, museums, mechatronics, online learning. So it was, it was a very broad, um, broad uh, picture on all of that. And um, so three years ago, I also started to, um, to teach at the university there. So um, it's a very broad education. Uh, so I did a lot of very small projects, but also very big projects in the field of augmented reality and so on. So I think I can share some insights from that. <laughs> Yeah, so what, and maybe what I forgot uh, is also that I studied content strategy and that's also here in Graz and it's a very unique um, kind of master program because it's, it's, there is only one of it uh, in Europe uh, where you can study content strategy. And the interesting part is that it's also the, the people who coined the term content strategy also teach there. So it's really, a very uh, living practice and um, I can explain a little bit more maybe what content strategy, interaction design and user experience yeah, design, sure. uh, where, where those come together, but we can talk about that maybe. Sure, sure. Later. So definitely we will pick up our later. So yeah. as, a, as a professor and as a you know, research, uh, so how was that experience and what is your responsibilities in that? Um, um so as i said yeah so that the research part is a very important one to to discover new ideas and discover how users think and how what kind of interaction users want um, and as a professor i would say it's very important that you give this broad perspective uh, on interaction design to the students so there is not only one pattern or one principle they they should learn but uh, they have to get the broader picture and also try stuff on their own so it's very important that they really go from theory and research really into practice so at the university where I teach, I'm, I'm responsible for, for interaction design in the bachelor program. Um, so they have um, a very good uh, ground knowledge of different design topics. But then in the third semester, they have to decide on uh, which, to, where, which area they, they want to specialize. So that means they can decide between communication design, media design and interaction design. So for interaction design, uh, it's very important that they really go uh, immediately into real projects and test out their knowledge and try on their own. So I think it's a responsibility for the teacher to, to guide them, to show them, okay, what kind of principles are out there, but also navigate them through um, designing, uh, new designing for new challenges. So yeah so now moving on to our core topic that is interaction design so so we can we can just help out to understand um because see, a lot of we think interaction design is only as it subject or maybe it's only related to only user experience so it is interaction design is very broad uh, as a term so you can, you can just uh, you know, give us idea about what do you mean by interaction design? And also you can add, you know, what are the current prospects we have? And, and when anybody wants to learn this interaction design, so what in future, uh, where is it is going actually interaction? Because we are a lot of heard about AR, we are maybe in mixed reality also. There are a lot of things are happening. So it's a, it's a big question, but we can answer mm, yeah, it. Yeah, a big and long question. But yeah. <laughs> To break it down. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Interaction design. I mean, it comes from from human in a uh, human machine interaction. So that where that term was coined. But 
as it says, interaction is anything between objects, humans, uh, humans and uh, machines. And basically, if you break it down, you have uh, the person, you have the user, you have the user that wants to fulfill a task and you have the machine or the service or the interface. So it can be seen very simple, but in the end, of course, uh, it can be quite huge because of course, interaction designers can really uh, be on that level where, for example, service design is. So where you have to choose what kind of services does the user need or does the task acquire. So it's on a very high level, then you can say, okay, you have now your device, for example, your phone, uh, and how should this phone or this application behave? So it's also uh, in a in, uh, uh, much deeper level that you say, okay, this application should do that and that. But also, of course, it, is, uh, it consists of interface design. So how does this application really look like? So you have a lot of uh, levels uh, that cover interaction design. And I personally, or there, there are a lot of people who think it that way, that it's not only about digital applications, is of course uh, the interaction with a glass or with, with an object, with a product. Uh, but you also have, of course, um, huge immersive experiences in it for what you design for. So you, you have really a lot of things to work on and the field is very big and uh, it gets getting bigger and bigger because yes, digital applications and interfaces uh, surround us more and more, uh, as you know. I mean, I always ask my students in the, in the first course uh, how many interfaces they have encountered on that day and they should, mm. should write it down and note it down. And it's huge. So when you think of it, the, all the applications you use on your phone, but also the, the doorknob, if you are <laughs> so uh, quite... Um, open to, to the field of interaction design. So it's a very interesting field. It, it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, so people are needed. The technology is, uh, is advancing while we are working on it. So that's also a very interesting part because um, there are no um, like recipes, how to design for augmented reality or how to design for artificial intelligence. So as an interaction designer, uh, you can design the interaction, but you also have to find ways of how to design for that, because um, that's the interesting part. It's developing and, you, and as interaction designer or user experience designer, you're in the center of this development. So I think that's the very interesting part of it. Uh, so um, I don't know if I have said enough about what's interaction design is, but of course, I mean, in the end, it should, the, the interface or the device uh, or the interaction you are designing for should not be in the way of your task. It should be useful, usable, but also enjoyable. So uh, depending on the task uh, your device or your application has to fulfill. But of course you should support uh, the user need. And so you have to find out what the user need is, what the problem actually is you want to solve, uh, and then how you can orchestrate uh, interactions and to get a really nice and usable user flow uh, to achieve the, the goals of the user. Um, and then I think the second question in your question was, um, what's, yeah, what's the future or um, yeah, how you... Sorry. Currently, we have um, yeah. the future in interaction and where this going. Yeah, so I think I, I covered it a little bit already. So with oh, yes. with the uh, with the technology and of course. Um, we have more and more around us, um, but also uh, when we see now the COVID situation, so touchless interactions are more and more coming, of course, not because they're nice to have, but uh, with the pandemic around us, it's very important to think about touchless interactions. And also, of course, smart homes and um, having actually the, the applications really around us and inside of products that are not our screens, our phones, but are kind of internet of things. Um, 
it gets more and more important. And um, how to study it, or that was the question yes. of what, yes. Yes. why should we study yeah. it and how? Um, yeah, as I said, so we at the, at the university try to, to have it really in a broad perspective. So from really interface design, uh, design research, uh, app design, web design, uh, animations. Um, we have really a lot of different lectures on that so that they have really the broad picture of it. Um, but they work really a lot on project works where they, the students have to try it on their own. I mean, it can be just one part of the whole design process so that they think about wireframes or um, have the prototypes ready or really develop also um, the applications we're working on. But we also, we not only have the bachelor's degree program, we also have a master's degree where they also can add two more years on interaction design practice. So there they're really building also responsive environments and doing much more on, on virtual reality and augmented reality. So that's really um, even more focused than, than in the bachelor degrees program. And um, what we can say about our students that uh, come out of our school or out of the university, I mean, and the university is called University of Applied Sciences. So it's really about doing the things, not just learning the, the, the processes and learning the methods, but it's really about doing it. And what we can say is that the students, um, on the one hand, really form their own companies when they finish their studies. Uh, so they really go into small groups and uh, building their startup, for example. But they also work in different fields of, of design agencies in the creative industries. So, for example, automotive industry, where, where they have to take care on uh, the screens for the autonomous cars, for example. So are just um, different kind of fields. So. I think studying and being open to whatever comes is really important. Yeah. And we try to to give them and equip them with those uh, I think, methods. Uh, because uh, we are in India, we think even to something oh, specifically in regards to interaction design, it's only about uh, doing web or mobile. So obviously, as you said correctly, it's all about learning human touch. Now, uh, another subject we uh, maybe every user experience person or practitioner should know that is about human factors, that subject. And how that study helps in the latest technology that we have in augmented reality or mixed reality. And so how do you think that will be helpful? Or you can take one of uh, any example of your studies and that will be maybe in this case, if you tell us, so that will be a great insight for our participants. Um, I, I'm not sure if I understood you right. Uh, maybe you could repeat the Yeah, I will repeat. Question. So, uh, yeah. you have a, we have a human factors as a subject, yeah. right? Yeah. And then human factors that leads to human comfort and interactions. And when, because uh, nowadays, you know, people are, which are in industry, which are learning they think it is like just i will i will learn some tools and i will become a ux designer so that is a wrong approach people are taking so for them uh, your answer will be helpful you know why we need this base that's a human factor human component interaction that study and how it will help you know argument or the latest what we have in interactions where maybe we can go in a touchless or maybe with the sound as you said correctly the iot things so maybe you can take one, one of an example of your project where and you can explain this thing to, part, to the audience. So yeah, um, as I said, yeah, the, the human factor is very important because in the end we're designing for humans. Uh, they are not dump users. Uh, they're really humans with a need. So and there is not only one special human. There are a lot of different perspectives on what the service or what the interaction design should be about. 
so that's very important to understand and also to to research of course because it does not make sense to to make a product just for one person so uh, we have to define our target group of course but also research into uh, why are people not using my product or why is only those group of people using my product? What do we write or what do we wrong? So it's also a very um, iterative process. So you have a product produced, uh, so you, but it maybe works, but you should um, iteratively test it and um, so improve it. So that's, that's the one thing. And um, for example, yeah, I recently worked on, on an exhibition, uh, augmented reality exhibition, where we or we as a group were responsible for the actually the, the exhibition design. So from the part where the user or the visitor comes through the door, uh, puts on his, his or her uh, HoloLens and then um, having a multi-user experience with interactive objects. So in that case, it's, it was very complicated to find out how the users will behave because we, we had no big experience in that. So we have to test a lot and prototype a lot uh, to see how the users interact with each other, but also how the users interact with the glasses and also how the users interact with the with the objects in the room so it was a quite um, complicated process um, so um, but it worked very well with experimenting with it so uh, do not um, do not uh, give up <laughs> in the beginning when you don't know how to do it but really try to find out uh, as much as possible about the people you want to address. In that case, it was for, for young adults. So we had young adults over and let them try out our objects we produced and also to, to guide them uh, through, the, through the exhibition space. Um, so, but um, even if it's a very small project or a very big project, basically it's, it's the process is kind of similar because, yeah, as I said, uh, have a look on who is the user of your product or should be the user of the product and then find the right way to, to communicate that message uh, that you want to communicate. So that's, you can strip it down basically to that and then you can go into every project and uh, do your research and then find the right way to, to communicate that message you want to. So I think user research is key for sure. So, yeah. I, you know, my question will be on that point. How the usability is, uh, and uh, what is the role of usability, or how UX designer uh, check the usability in such, uh, such, you know, such advanced. Uh, in the futuristic when you talk about such kind of projects or what are the methods you follow for testing the usability of these things? Sure. So yeah, of course there are standard uh, books on usability from Don Norman uh, to Steve Krug. Of course, there are some patterns you can follow or you can validate uh, what you are designing. So of course you have to take into account the, the mental models of, of the users you're designing for. So um, make sure that you try to make your product the way the people think or already uh, patterns they know. So for example, you know how an iPhone is used. So if you're designing something for an iPhone, be sure to use those patterns. So there is also kind of, uh, of course, uh, guidelines from Apple, guidelines from all the, all the technology uh, companies uh, to how to design for them. But it's not just the usability, of course. Um, so just uh, avoid complexity. So that's a key factor that you also give the right feedback or help the user to, to achieve this goal. Um, 
also that's maybe also where where the content strategy part kicks in that i um i'm referring it in the beginning because of course it's not only the the interaction but it's also the content you deliver for them so content in that case for example means okay what what's the line that i get when i have an error or what's what's the text that i have on my button to click or on the on the call to action for example so what do i want from the user and how do i speak to the user and that should be kind of a, a, a defined tone and voice, uh, but it should help the user in, in any, at any stage he's in. So it's not only the, the main text of the landing page, but it's also the, the micro copy, the user interface uh, copy. So all the texts that I use. So uh, yeah, make it usable. <laughs> test it and uh, yeah, follow the guidelines that are around and um, yeah, with, I don't know. Great. Uh, and what are typical challenges uh, you see uh, where, you know, the, the upcoming talent, they want to enter in impression design. So what are the challenges you see and how they can tackle these challenges? Because maybe I can tell you a scenario from India professionals as a designer uh, they may be come from uh, pure as a design students uh, maybe they are uh, coming from as a web designer they learn html javascript and they turn into UX design or maybe some people are directly nowadays we have a lot of uh, international certification also uh, they get or uh, user experience but we have a lot of mix uh, you know, uh, background people mostly multidisciplinary uh, in the as a, as a, and they want to become as interaction designers so what do you think the challenges they have in the industry and how they can uh, what are the you can give a tips or you know, how they can solve those problems obviously research and what you tell is uh, during the projects there but uh, uh, when they decide it yes they want to become interaction designers so on that you can you can just describe on that one so. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so my recommendations, I mean, it's, it's always a process of learning. Uh, so it's not, so you can't stop anywhere and think, yeah. okay, I've learned a lot. So it's, it's, I think for every professional, no matter how old he is or how senior he is or she is in her practice, I think there is always a lot to learn. So kind of a lot of online resources are out there or courses, for example, uh, also the one course where we are part in uh, we will talk about it later but so it's use what's there and try to to learn and also look into into case studies because uh, other people share a lot okay what worked well for them uh, have a look in in that case studies but also share for yourself so if you have something that you, that went very well or also cases that went not so well are quite important to learn from them. So also failures, uh, it's maybe the American system to learn from the failures. Um, so um, that would be a recommendation, never stop learning because as I said earlier, also with the technology that's always advancing, there is always so much to learn and new things uh, come up. Um, and really, Try, make projects on your own. So if you have no job, maybe at the moment, but really think of a challenge for yourself and work on, on this challenge and present your challenge or present the solution you, you decided or you decided on or you worked on. So I think that's also very important. And um, find communities around you. So there are a lot of uh, LinkedIn communities or Facebook communities uh, that share their knowledge and their resources. And that's also very important to learn from the others and to, to connect with others. So I think that's, that's the best case to learn. Um, and especially maybe for interaction design, um, be also quite open and and see what's around you. So uh, I experienced it myself when you think interaction design and then you go out somewhere in the city 
you all, always, also always see interfaces, you see how they work well or how they do not work well or how users uh, use um, products in a different way they are supposed to be used. So I think to be open and um, research the whole day long for yourself uh, is a quite good teacher also for everyone. So. That is great answer. Uh, okay, now uh, just uh, as you said, uh, that as a uh, as a UX UI training lab, and uh, we have collaborated with uh, uh, HFI, that is a uh, with uh, Vivian group, and UX PCC. We are actually a launching program here in India, uh, and you are as uh, international uh, professor for there also. So we can just give a few you know, uh, information about that program and how UX PCC certifications uh, will help out in interaction design and so that we can also elaborate on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, yeah, as you said, in a cooperation with you and Vivian, Sabina and Hannes Robier uh, from Graz, uh, they started the whole thing and in two weeks there will be an online course, especially for for audience in your area. Um, it will be divided into four sessions on two weekends and basically the idea is to have a really good foundation level on all the all the topics and the terms uh, that are important for user experience design. So it's really from uh, behavior research and gestalten principe. So how, how to, to take that into account, how the users see or percept um, their surroundings to really having a focus on the designing of products, uh, defining the tasks, uh, test wireframing them and testing them and also how to to integrate them. So it's a really, really good wrap up. So I once was a student myself of that, of that program. So I can say from the student's perspective, it's really uh, everything is in that program. Um, and it's, it's very well uh, equipped with also real life uh, examples. So that's very important to see, okay, that makes really sense what they are teaching me there. Um, yeah, and as I said, it's on two weekends, um, four hours each, so four hours each day. And I think it's really a good starting point, but not also a starting point for people who are new to the field of user experience design, but also for people who are, are already maybe have a career in that field, but want to have a, a, a wrap up or a, a refreshment on some, some areas and get a real certificate for it. So that's that's very important, I think. Uh, I think directly, Hannes is also many times says uh, it is, uh, we should speak a global UX language. So uh, yeah. that was great. Uh, so soon, uh, I think uh, you will already have shared information on the three. So people have, you must have gone through and maybe we'll come up with more such programs in future. So I'm just now open floor for questions for audience if they have. Uh, so before they will see, please ask your questions in the chat box so we can take one more. Uh, okay, we have a question from so uh, I just read out that question. Uh, so talking about interaction design and practice. How do you plan your initial research for any project? Is there any specific process techniques you follow all the times, or it is something you change based on every project specifics? Uh, so he is uh, currently working on a, a project that requires me to do some grassroots research and low income shop owners in India. These people do not speak English, usually have very low tech competency, how would you approach such a situation? And also you had any good recommendation on the research on uh, user research in particular groups? I think this is a very interesting question where I think mm -hmm. everybody wants, you know, how to start uh, 
any web changes, any project. Sure. So that's sure. Big. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I mean, there is no common uh, way I start every project. It's always adjusted to the to the task. And of course, not only to the task, but it often it's also a, a budget problem because some companies or some clients don't see uh, all the time the, 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 the importance or the value of user research. So it's often not possible to get a lot of uh, manpower or woman power to, to achieve uh, or to, to make this research. But I think when you, um, especially when you are planning a new project or when you're working really on a new product, I think it's very important to really talk to the people where the pain points are. So uh, what, what kind of solution should we provide for the problem? So it's always important to, to, of course, talk to the people, do interviews, for example, I like very much open interviews or really qualitative interviews because you get a lot of out of it. Um, but it, on the other hand, when you're um, building or designing for the masses, maybe you can um, take uh, statistics or research that has already been done in that field that you can take and, and draw some conclusions out of it. And when you are in the middle of a project or maybe just um, re, um, relaunching something, then it's always good to have user testing, of course, because you can really uh, take your phone, go go with it to uh, potential clients or customers uh, and let them do some tasks uh, on your website, for example. So if, if there is already something you can test with them or get insights on the use of your product, then it's always good to just bring them in or go to them and, and let them use the product because then often you have some ideas or you, you see the problems. Um, so uh, I'm just rereading the second part of the question. Um, Grassroots research, low income shop owners. Yeah, I would maybe have really kind of desk research in the beginning to see, okay, is there some study or is there some other project who worked in, the, in a similar direction and to get some insights from out of there. And then maybe quite uh, have a good planning in maybe asking five people at least or so to ha have them for one hour and and ask where really the pain points are and and what the product can solve for it a recommendation for user research in particular so I mean, the, the Nielsen Norman group has a lot of good resources online. Uh, they are all accessible. The Interaction Design Foundation has a lot of um, uh, blog posts or uh, white papers on user research. Um, also the, um, a, a blog apart, is it called? It's, uh, it's the company, it's, it's not a company, but the association that also provides this uh, series of a book apart it's called so they have a lot of very interesting and useful books on, on different kinds of topics so user research uh, but also how to design or content strategy for example web development responsive design and so on so they also have a blog where a lot of uh, useful insights um, I, you can get a lot of useful insights so i hope nowadays we have a lot of and uh, resources uh, yeah. I think that, that was a good answer. And I think yeah. the, the research is uh, key here also. So I have one, uh, I have to add one uh, uh, point you. in the same question, where he is talking about, you know, the people are, they have, don't have any long language competency or maybe they don't have a technical. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, one set of our community is a uh, handicap or accessible. Uh, so how you plan those things in your uh, research or while you are, uh, suppose you are interacting uh, some futuristic AR, VR kind of a thing and how you plan disabled disabilities or especially uh, those kind of studies? Mm -hmm. um, is, is there any uh, guideline for this uh, for doing 
of such projects? Or? <laughs> so, I mean, for the project I was talking about earlier with the, with the HoloLenses and this museum experience, uh, there was not actually a guideline. I mean, it was a very special project because also the, the content was not defined from the beginning uh, and uh, the how people should interact with, with all the um, uh, artifacts was not. So it was really, um, we, we designed it from the beginning, so to say. So we, as I said, we had also to define our research I mean, of course, we did research uh, on the HoloLenses themselves, so it's uh, how how you use them and really tried out uh, some some experiments with okay, what the light should be, for example, or what the the, the surrounding can be that the that the experience really is immersive and engaging and nice to have so but i think that's some kind of different research you actually mean so um we tried i mean there, there was not really a, a, a written out plan so as the project was quite uh, adjusting itself on the way there was not really a plan but we always knew that we have to to test what we develop. Uh, um, so there were certain steps in the project we defined where we have something that we can um, put in front of the people. So, um, so how do I plan? Um, it really depends. So um, Often it's it's just an evaluation of existing uh, products. That's very often the kind. So to to find really out what's the problem with the product or the problem with the application, and that of course you have to plan. So um, you you have a look on it on your own to see okay what 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 should be the the research on it and then have a plan on interviewing people so you have a structured interview guideline of course uh, that the if you do if you have this uh, work effort of interviewing people that you get the most out of the of the answers and of course already with the planning of these interviews you have to think okay who are the people you are asking uh, as you said, uh, what is their language skill or do they understand the things I ask them? So already in this process of researching, you have to think, okay, who are the people in front of you so that you don't uh, overwhelm them or that uh, they can give you the, the right answers or the things. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we have a question. One more. Yeah, we have, okay, okay, for a person who is a new to UX research and master the fundamentals of it, how he or she can decide on what domain product will be the best to start with. And second part is given the, uh, give the uh, person is very interested in your uh, creative work in, uh, in interested in what really uh, take, uh, takes people and how will people evolve in the fast moving world. So, a couple of questions. Okay, so I will start with yeah. the first part of it. <laughs> um, so how can I decide on what domain product will be the best to start with? with? So I think don't overwhelm yourself or don't uh, put too much pressure on yourself so starting with evaluating maybe an existing product that you can work on and um, look really into the the user journey of it i mean for example you can try to start with um, seeing it from you as a user perspective i mean it's not for of course when you're really into developing Stuff, you have to ask the real users not yourself so that's very important but I think to 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 train it for example you can do it from your perspective or from your uh, friends perspective that you try to to 
to produce a user journey on some service you know or you have around it so that you can just train uh, train those steps uh, or also train interviews but which domain you should work on I think there's so much to work on so um, um, I think it's it's very interesting the things uh, to work on things that should actually be very easy in use. So, for example, your uh, printer machine or your printing machine and the interface of your printing machine should actually be quite usable, but often it's not. So maybe uh, have some evaluation on that uh, and give yourself that task that you find out, okay, uh, what's the problem and how can you do it better, for example. Um, or analyze web services, for example, uh, in any field. So I start with so the, given the person is very, Um, I don't know if I understand the question right, um, but um, how to help people in, in this time where, where technology evolves all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming, of course, if every now and then, every day, a new um, approach or new technology or new service pops up. But I think you have to, to keep yourself um, down to earth a little bit and say, okay, uh, it's just another method of uh, transmitting your message. So it's just another um, kind of uh, medium. <laughs> but in the end, as I said, it's always the user who has a task to fulfill and how this medium can be used to trans, uh, to, to trans, um, um, no transform or present the task in the right way or to, to support the task you have to fulfill. So, um, and it's always interesting also to, to look into the history of technology and the web, for example, because then you see the perspective, perspective of it. So, for example, a book had a thousand years uh, to, to be tested and tried out the best way how you use a book. And it's still some kind of similar to, um, to, to how books were a thousand years ago. Uh, and now we have for some decades now we have computers and the internet. So don't be scared too much. Um, it will go on like that, I think. But if you really have the principles of designing things and you know all about that, I think you are on a very good ground and see it more as a playground to, to play with and to be open to new. You always say uh, put user first, I think. That, is, that was, uh, let's take one of the last question, I think, today. Uh, so Ashish has uh, something, sometimes mental models of user groups will not match with the conceptual model of a product. So how do you manage that research? I think that question is more relevant uh, when we talk about when a person is using AR and VR things. So mm -hmm. can answer on that. Um, yeah, that's true. That's often the case. <laughs> um, so, but um, I mean, one thing is that you as a decider already know that there might be a mismatch. So that's the one important thing to, to, to know it, that uh, it's not the same. So that's the first uh, important thing. And then uh, guide the user there or help the user learn um, how this product has to be used. I mean, of course, uh, it should be it meet it should meet somewhere in between. So, of course, uh, the product should um, be remodeled more towards the mental model of the user. But of course, sometimes it's not possible. But um, even then, I think content strategy works very well here. So, to see how can I support the user in achieving the goal anyhow, 
and uh, support him with text or images or um, videos, anything I have in, uh, in the repertoire um, to, to bridge this mismatch a little bit. So, um, and of course, to use any, any occasion when you are part of the developing team to, to work the conceptual model more into the mental model of the user. But of course, uh, with new te technology, it's not always always the case. We have to learn a lot of, a lot of new gestures and interaction modes. So that's, that's not easy for the users. But I think we, we as users already Yes. Um, learned a lot. Uh, I think that uh, was really a pleasure and a very insightful discussion for everyone. I hope in future, uh, as, as a part of UXPCC, also uh, you will take more time for Indian audience. Uh, and you will see sure. definitely some uh, uh, people who will show more interest in the user experience as a career. Uh, thanks once again uh, for your valuable time taking out for uh, today's audience. Uh, hope, I, I hope they will get, uh, they have got some some insight about interaction design. Maybe they take up your curiosity also, or maybe we, we are able to answer their questions also. So thanks for uh, once again. So so as uh, I have a little bit of announcement about them. So next UX talk we have about uh, for CX, it is also a new term which we are talking. Uh, so our speaker is uh, Debbie. Uh, she is she's uh, founder of uh, Delta CX. So she is also talking about how uh, CX and user experience how that will go. Uh, as a UX talk uh, and as a UX UI training lab, we are uh, coming up with uh, uh, in collaboration with UXPCC that program also we already are posted on LinkedIn. So please do follow there also. And if you're interested, if you have any queries, please uh, you can connect with me anytime. Uh, so you can, you can answer those questions. Uh, also, we have a, a very good workshop, uh, which is planned with uh, on behavioral psychology and with Susan Winship and for my UX talk audience and plus a LinkedIn page, uh, we have given some discount. So please take this opportunity and uh, we call her as a brain lady. So just take a chance to interact with her. Okay. Uh, once again, thanks Ali. I, I always also thanks uh, everybody for taking out time and hopefully we'll meet again for next UX talk and uh, from another uh, good speaker and we will impact more on user experience. Okay. Thanks everybody for your Thanks. Thank you and bye bye to everyone. It was nice to be here. Sure. Bye. Same. Bye.